Hey guys, it's been a while since I've made a video and I was busy with work, but with me hitting almost hitting 1000 subscribers as of filming this, uh, I'm excited to start making more videos again. And the release of NeoVim 0.5 is, is awesome as well. Um, so that's why I wanted to start with just creating your own Lua based NeoVim config from scratch. Now this does require NeoVim 0.5. Um, and as you can see, I have uh, new Vim 0.50 build type release. Um, and we'll start with a completely empty, no init.vim, completely empty init.lua file. And now some of the benefits include the fact that Lua is a much nicer language, it's more modular, um, and we'll see some of the modularity there. Um, and it's far more easier to customize, write your own custom functions. And as more and more NeoVim Lua plugins show up, as you might have noticed more recently, um, they're a lot easier to configure if you're inside Lua, instead of having to constantly, you know, inside your Vim config, uh, scope out Lua code. Um, so just going pure Lua is awesome. So let's get started. Now you could just start inside your init.vim file, just add some Lua code uh, and start using that. But uh, I'm gonna start from scratch instead here. So dot config uh, on them and init dot lua. And now this is completely empty. Oh, by the way, I have aliased um, vi to neovim just because I got too used to typing vi. So, but this is just calling neovim. Um, all right, so this is completely empty, and we're going to start with this. Now there are three types of configuration options. There are global options, which are accessed through vim dot o. Um, options that are local to your window that are accessed through wo and local to your buffer that are accessed through uh, BO. So let's start by converting this common thing that I add. Yeah, and right now you can see that if I type something and then I, and then I hit my tab character, so this is now, this is now hitting, you, you can see this is a tab character. I, I can't go here, there's no spaces inserted and it's inserting a full eight spaces here. So, um, let's start by doing this configuration. So we can just do vim.bo um, expand tab, dot expand tab true, vim.bo.shift equal to, and vim.bo.soft tab stop equal to. And source my um, dot lua. All right, so now I type something and I hit my tab character you'll notice that it now uh, added two spaces here, and that's based off of this configuration here that I just added here. So I am going to save this. Now, one question you might ask is, how do we know which option it is? Um, do I do for any of the Vim config? In Vim, you could just do set and then the name of the thing. Uh, and here I'm doing, um, I have to specify whether it's a global or window or a buffer thing. And you can usually check by just doing like help um, expand tab, and this will show you that this is um, local to the buffer here. Uh, one more thing I'll call out is the fact that uh, in usual Vim you would do set maybe expand tab or set no, uh, no expand tab. Yeah, no expand tab. Um, here you would just do vim.vo to expand tab equal true or false. If I don't, I don't do no dot no expand tab equals true. So the next thing we want to tackle is key bindings because that's a very common part of configuring any sort of Vim or NeoVim instance. And NeoVim supplies this really nice API. So it's just vim.api.nvim underscore set underscore key map. The first thing you specify here is the mode. So in, in our key bindings, in our Vim config, um, this would be N, I, V, and this basically specifies under which mode these key maps should apply. So in normal mode, insert mode, stuff like that. The second part is the key map, so this will be this part here. Um, the third part is what they should be mapped to, which is this part here from, which is the, the thing that comes off, it's the right hand side of this thing. And the final part is the option. So the options include things like uh, no remap, and no remap just means that you, we won't have, allow for recursive mapping, and recursive mapping is if you map something on the right hand side that then itself is a map. Uh, and we don't want that behavior, we just want the the exact, if something else maps control W, J, we don't want to remap that thing to control J. Um, we want to map the default behavior, so non-recursively to control J. So uh, that's all that is. 
Now, instead of just calling this over and over again, uh, we alias it to an easier to use key map word. Um, so we can just do key map, um, specify normal insert mode, specify our key map, specify what they're mapped to. And if it's empty, we'll just do empty brackets. But if we want to specify some options, we'll say um, options equal, um, in our case, we just want no remap equals true. So let's go ahead and test it out in our init.loader file. So right now, if I split it, if I split it vertically, if I split it horizontally, I can't use control J L to navigate. It's still, my cursor still remains here. And this is the default behavior of him. You have to do control W J, control W L, and control W K. So let's add those key maps here. So I have my presentation markdown source here, so I can just copy these over. All right, so I've copied this over. I can source it. Now I can do Control H L, Control J, Control, and you'll see that my cursor is moving based off of these key bindings. And I can also do, um, if I make a change, even in insert mode, I can do Control S. That'll save. You'll notice that the plus thing here um, went away, and in normal mode as well, um, this went away, and it said that it was written in the status bar. Now let's talk about package management. So package management is very useful and it'll let us get into the, some of the nitty gritty parts of uh, Lua as well. So uh, we're going to use Packer for our package management and on our space systems, we can just install it with Yay. And after we've installed it, we can basically in our NeoVim uh, init.lua, we can just add require Packer startup function, and then we type in use the GitHub path. And we can similarly add use some other path for other packages. And once we have those, we can use Packer sync, which compiles and installs them, downloads and installs them basically. Now let's see how this works in practice actually. So I've added require Packer startup function, and I've added three different packages here. I want Packer to manage itself. Uh, I'm going to add this color scheme that I just added right now. And the final thing is I'm going to talk about within wiki because it has some level of configuration. So first off we can do packer sync which will confirm that these are all up to date. And for the color scheme we can just do vim.g.colors underscore name equals molokai instead of um, I think it used to be color scheme. Um, so if you just take a look at the color scheme thing um, you'll notice that it said uh, it's basically the same as colors underscore name. Uh, and now for the Wim wiki part. So VimWiki requires um, this dictionary being added to the VimWiki list, which sets configuration options for the syntax, the extension for the files that are created, and the path. And uh, all this does, all we have to do is to convert it into two, two sort of tables. Tables are the um, Lua way of storing data, uh, storing structured data. So in this case, open bracket, open bracket, and then we specify a path, specify an extension, uh, and the syntax. And the second part of it is um, a, a single table like representation. However, because the keys here are not um, uh, start with dots and that's, those don't work well as, uh, as keys, we'll, we'll have to enclose them in square brackets and then it, it works. And then if we source it, um, you'll notice that it works. All right, so now I can do um, the default key binding for opening up my wiki, which is slash www, um, and you'll see that it um, opens up my Wim wiki. So that's basically package management, but we can do something really cool here. So Packer allows us to specify the configuration for plugins right next to this, uh, this use thing. So I can do use, and I'm going to use Wim wiki, and I'm going to say config equals function. And I'm just going to specify the config here. So, uh, and then I'll just take these. Let me just delete these from here. Put these here. Let's remove, get rid of this. Do this. And yep. Okay. So now I've just put these inside here, inside this function. So it's basically the function starts. We call this function. We call a second statement, and then we end the function. And if I source it now, you'll notice that it works. I do need to do a packer sync. Yeah, and if I change this to um, to pass to something different now, uh, I can save it. And I believe I have to reload this for the key binding to work probably. And now if I do slash www, it'll open up index.md at uh, this location instead. So it ends up working, so that's great. And the final part of this is that we can reorganize our files by creating a folder inside the NeoVim folder uh, under Lua, and we can include those 
And this is very common. If you look at most people's uh, Lua configs, it'll have some form of require, and then it'll be some Lua file. And you don't need to specify the dot Lua. Uh, and for, for patch, you just, again, don't need to specify that. So let's try doing that. So, and I've done just that for uh, my config that I was just talking about. So if I um, open up the config and then Lua key bindings, these are the same key bindings we just saw. And if I open up uh, packages, it's the package code, it's a package config, and perhaps badly named, it's just uh, config, that's the global config, global and buffer config. Um, so that's basically it. I know this was somewhat basic. Uh, I do want to dive into setting up TreeSitter and the NeoVim LSP in future videos. Thank you guys for watching. Um, please like and subscribe.